<laughs> All right, guys. Hello, hello, chat. Hello, everyone. And here we go. Here's the fourth string. Gonna be here for around five minutes or so before people come in. I said it a little bit, a little bit earlier. And I already got everything open, I think. And I'm gonna be doing several interesting things today. I hope, anyways. Teach me, Dad. Um. My my time zone is like just like I think it's like an hour or so or two ahead of Eastern Standard Time, and I, the reason why I stream in weird hours is just because I I just wake up in weird hours. I have the luxury, thankfully, of just waking up and going to sleep whenever I want, so that's good. But. I also have the, like, the non-luxury of having to be responsible for how much you work. It's 9 a.m. here. Yeah. You guys ready to play some blitz ball? Yeah. Perpetually pretty underwater. Blitz ball isn't cool little mini game. I enjoyed it. Final Fantasy X was an amazing game. Fuck the people that hate it. It's such a good game. Anyways, let me just check the time. I've been here for two minutes. So if you're just starting this when it reaches five minutes, I'm gonna start doing stuff and well you can just time skip to five minutes if you want to. I was watching this in the future. The future. Oh yeah, Spazzy, you're like 12 hours. Oh let me check it. Oh, it's an hour. It's an hour ahead. It's 10 p.m. over there. Fucking Aussies. Unless you live somewhere else. Let me check. How many time zones does it have? What? It has plus five. Holy shit! What the fuck are those time zones? There's like five and they go from six to nine. What the fuck? No, the, no Spazzy, I'm looking at it. Oh, it's, it's with daylight savings time, of course. Okay, so with no daylight savings time, it's only three. But it's okay. So the the east of Australia is is like two hours behind. Damn, it's a fucking huge country. Yeah, seems like it. We have like three time zones as well, but I'm not sure if it's worth it having time zones like this, dude. Like, I'm gonna have to say, I kind of think time zones are dumb. I wish the world just used one clock, and then each country just had its own time to, to go to sleep, like... Uh, I don't know, like, we just used the, the one time zone, like, the, the, the one in... Uh, the one for the UK, and we just adapted our times based on that. Like, we didn't, we don't have to change our times, but basically, like, let's say nightfall comes at, like, 1pm or something like that. I don't know. It 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 doesn't really need to change. Like it's just it's just a number. Does night f nightfall really need to come at like seven or five p.m.? It's always different everywhere too, as well. Depending on the seasons and the tilt of the earth, it's always different, anyways. So, 
God damn it. Okay, you're five minutes in. Let's start. Alright, here we go, guys. We're in Glictane. Glictane Fusion. And I have our little Sonic EX over here. Alright, so what are we gonna be doing today? Okay, so yesterday we did a couple of moves and we added the character itself. Now, uh, I know a lot of people wanted me to add more moves, but I decided that that should be probably saved for some kind of extra, extra stream, which I'm not sure if I'm going to do. But, uh, what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna skip straight to making a uh, level design, and I just feel like there's a lot more I can teach you guys over there. So, what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna make my own sprites. I'm gonna go into a site. I'm gonna do just what <laughs> most Sonic Fan Games creators do and make a collage level. That's what I'm calling it. It's a level that is a collage of several pieces from several stages all over the, the place. So that's what I'm gonna do. But where do we go and what sprites do we get and how do we do the composition of the stage? Okay, so for the most part, I want it to be some sort of city, sta city stage and I want the color scheme of this stage to be like the the green of Simple Sonic Worlds. So it's gonna it's gonna have this whole green theme on top of it, uh, right? So okay, it's green and dark blue, really. It's it's like a gradient. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna be using Photoshop, and I'm gonna tr well some things I'm gonna use in Photoshop, some things I'm not going to. It's much harder to recolor things outside of Photoshop. It's gonna require a lot more effort, so. And I don't know how to do it personally, so <laughs> I'm just going to be using Photoshop for this. If you want to get Photoshop, it's actually kind of cheap just to get the subscription. It's not really that expensive, uh, especially if you get like, I think there's a pack that I got when I, when I did it. And apparently my subscription like kind of expired. I don't know what happened. Something was wrong with my credit card, but I should be renewing it soon. So. Some bullshit just happened. All right, so here's Photoshop. Now let's get some some sprites. That uh, what happens when we use an only click team? Well, you can use click team, but it's not gonna be as easy, especially to recolor stuff. Uh, with Photoshop, I'm gonna teach you several easy ways to color stuff without losing much and doing it faster as well. So. It's just a way to speed up progress and just make things faster. In fact, I highly, highly recommend you start learning Photoshop as soon as possible. I know not all PCs in the world handle it, but if you can handle Click Team Fusion, you can probably handle, handle Photoshop. And it's just too damn useful. It's just too damn fucking useful. Let me just close Lab Chirp. No, here's the thing, Spazzy. You want me to use Route 99? Well, no, I'm not using Route 99. I'm only using sprites from the Genesis games because the scale of everything that we are using is from the Genesis games. Sonic Advance sprites are actually much smaller than uh, classic Sonic sprites. So if I'm going to use Route 99 sprites, things are going to be smaller. So, and the art style is different as well. However, the classic games have a lot more of a cohesive art style. So we're going to be using that one. Right, so let me just go to Firefox, and here we go. We're gonna go into the Spriters resource. S spriters res res resource. You can also see how I type. It's bad. It's this side over here. It has a shit ton of resources for almost anything you might need in terms of spriting. It's just they just keep adding and adding on and on. Here you go. There is Garfield. Garfield, if you want to call it that. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's search, just search Sonic. Not safe for work off. What? <laughs> Please don't show porn. Caro? Sonic Buck Adventure style, okay, that's not what I wanted. Alright, so, okay, we're already not getting anywhere over here, so here's what we're gonna do. Here there's a consoles section, and we can just check Genesis, Search Vector, Sega CD. And there we go, most popular games, we already got them over there. We're gonna be using Sonic 3, Sonic 1, and Sonic CD, and Sonic 3 Sports, basically the Genesis games. And we can just... I think there's a, there's a letter there's a letter selection over here. If you're going to S, you can find all the games with S. Oh, including hacks. Why? 
Don't use sprites from hacks. Just use the, just use sprites from the classic. There's already plenty of them. All right, Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic XL. Oh God. Oh, this side doesn't have this many sprites. Sonic Crackers. That's, that has some good sprites in it. And it and this style is the same. Sonic 2, Sonic 3, and Sonic CD. And by the way, try not to use sprites from Sonic Hacks. Seriously, this might get you in trouble with people that actually that don't want you using those sprites. And I don't know why they're here. So so. All right, so I got several things over here. There's Sonic Knuckles. Oh, they have a little border around those things. Is this looking for some kind of Christmas border? Maybe it just means that they're old sprites. Anyways, all right, so here in backgrounds, we got the zones themselves, I think. Yeah, so we're gonna just make a selection of zones. All right, so we got Takano Tower. I like this one a lot. It has already several sprites in it. So this one's one that we're gonna be using. And we're just gonna go over here and save it, whatever it is. Let me just move this over here. Um, right, it's in... God damn it. Ah, I have so many fucking folders. Alright, so you're just gonna send my sounds folder. Whatever. It's the same one that we'd be using yesterday. Right, so from Sonic 2, let's get uh let's get Chemical Plant. Uh let's get Oil Ocean and Metropolis. Right, and from those maybe we also should get some sprites from some other stages as well, like let's see what I can get from Aquatic Ruin, Hilltop and Emerald Hill. Oh, it's a zip. I don't want a zip. Yeah, it's a, a zip is actually a pretty good idea, but mm, I'm not gonna be using that one. Right, so let's get the oil ocean sheet. Let's put it in there. Oh, yeah, I guess I guess it is Christmas theme, huh? Is it doing? There's this little Santa here. All right. Saving Metropolis, and what we can, what can we get from this stage? Oh, we can get some mountains, some some forest. Heads up, it's zip. I don't want to download the zip. All right, so from over here, what can we get? Can get something from Angel Island and Lounge Base. And maybe something from Carnival Night. Right, so let's save this one. I hope I haven't actually like downloaded a smaller image. Cause if I did do that, then that's bad. Let's just get launch base. Carnival night. Now from Sonic CD. Oh, Sonic CD has plenty of metallic levels, and you know. With that sort of stuff, so it's actually fairly easy to get something out of it. Rocky Workbench, that's a lot of good stuff. So let's just go for Rocky Workbench. So down here, we just save it. All right. Let me check out the stream. Is this stream going right? Yep, seems to be. For Menjo Island, we might just do it. I've already saved it. Okay, never mind. Ugh. Right, whatever. This is all we got. This is all we have. Right, don't need anything else. Okay, so first, here's what we do at our stage. Uh, first, we need some kind of idea for it and what exactly is going to be. Uh, wait, wait. Oh yeah, the the sprites from Techno Tower. Not Techno Tower. It's I forgot the name of the stage, but the Knuckles Chaotic Sprite, some of it is used indeed in, uh, in before the sequel. So, this is a little border. And, can, you, can you guys see this? It's gone now. Oh well, anyways. Um, okay, so, right. Where there seems to be some kind of city stage, and, ah, uh, 
when I plan my stages, here's what I do pretty much. I created like an image and I draw what kind of tile set I want it to be, what kind of stage I want it to be, and I usually draw it in using my tablet and whatnot. But since this is just a tutorial, I'm not gonna really do that. Uh, stage itself should have a start, and in this start, it should somehow split up in several paths. Those paths should intersect, connect, and change, and at the end, they should all congregate in the same goal. This is just basic level structure we can use, and there should obviously be some secrets down the line that you can go to, some stuff down at the bottom, but no bottle and spit. Right, I usually always have some kind of structure of how I want to present my level designs, for example, in Spark, uh, while making... What's the name of the stage? It's... Man, I forgot it. <laughs> Sunfire Forest, right. I wanted the stage to have some sort of like, it's not really a pinball table, but something like that. So I d developed the stage where it had routes that came back in each and into each other, but also there was alternative routes to go somewhere. They would always converge onto a point that would send you upwards into a pinball table, right? But if you wanted to just go around and explore, you could just go over here, just go over here and then go back. And just do several things and doing arrows like this is a good way of of keeping track of what what you you want your level design to be and then after that they the whole stage would converge into a tube and from this tube you could go into four different directions and then what i wanted to do was essentially just several paths like one path here another path here another path here and there's ways you can fall and there are ways you can go up and it's kind of treacherous like that and there's also ways you can just go down all the way and go to another path down there and you know there's stuff we're gonna we, you can plan out things and whatnot but I already said how I'm gonna do it you don't have to plan out your stages sometimes uh, just by doing it just by what assets you have you can by mix and matching them you already have like something you're gonna do you already you, you, you like the ideas come on the spot pretty much based on what you have right but essentially what level design is and here's the principles of it uh, I'm just getting my drawing tablet to Caesar to do this so here basically where's my pen there is. right so I don't exactly do this for all stages of Spazzy. Uh, a lot of the stages I have this in my own head, so I already know what I'm doing for the most part. Come on, I'm just new Photoshop. Right, so for example, what I was gonna do exactly? Oh yeah, so structure of level design. You usually want like a roller coaster curve like this. Not in the sense of the level, but in the sense of of excitement. Let me just use a better brush. Ex excite. And here is length. This is just a basic concept of flow, pretty much. And here's what you want to do. You want to. Th those kinds of things are how to raise this, the excitement is the problem. But I'm gonna go back into this graph later and let me just scale this down, put it over there. You probably can't even see it. In fact, let me make the background wide just so it's easier for us. Alright, I'm extend this too. Photoshop tools, ladies and gentlemen. Fucking fantastic tools. So, how does level design work exactly? Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to tell you how to pay, how for how you should pace your level design uh, very quickly, but not for very quickly, but like for a Sonic game. I'm gonna have uh, Sonic games in mind in making this. Okay, so first of all, what you want to do is that just like in a story, once you start reading a story or reading a movie or reading a movie, watching a movie or watching an anime or watching something, the first thing that's usually done is called exposition. Mm. Next position is when you introduce your elements, and the same thing has to be done in the level design. Except, you gotta remember 
that you have to introduce your platforms. This is a thing that people don't really realize about it. Because here's the thing. The player doesn't know exactly what they can collide with at the start of a level. They can have an idea, but they don't know exactly. And a lot of the problem uh, several level designs suffer from is that the player just doesn't know uh, where to go, they can get confused and not only that, but they don't know what they can collide with, where, where they can jump, jump on, what damages them, what is bad and what is good. So in a sense, the first thing you want to do, number one, I should, I should make it so large, the num number one thing you want to do is introduce your player to your platforms and how they are. For example, if a player just stands on a platform, they will already know several basic things about it just instinctively. For example, this little part over here could be a different color than the parts that are non-collidable, like the, the insides of it, right? For example, if the inside is like a grid pattern, you can also put this grid pattern over here. And as long as the collidable parts, like this one and this one, are the same color, the player is going to be able to know that this part over here isn't. Another way of introducing players to what's collidable or not is just by making them run through it. Just have them go through a slope and go downhill. And then when he gets to a certain part where he just won't stop running just because he's already running. And players don't stop running, by the way. If you let them keep running, they will keep doing it. <laughs> they will just keep at it, right? And you can just introduce your little foreground grid pattern over here. And they can just go through it like that and another good thing really is again what i said before is that you should make things that are collidable generally the same color or colors in general and things that aren't a different color for example uh some stages for example chemical plant i think I'm not really sure if chemical plant does this but it uses colors like blue and yellow this isn't the chemical plant blue <laughs> They use like blue and yellow, which are very contrasting colors. They don't, exa don't exactly represent collision, but they use blue and yellow for the things in the foreground, but for things in the background, it was a much darker reddish color, right? So uh, have the buildings in the background and whatnot. It doesn't exactly apply this everywhere. It has some issues. But mostly, Chemical Plant does just fine. You know, so... Using darker colors in the background or using less satura saturation in the background is also important. You, you need to be able to tell your player what's in the background and what's in the foreground. The foreground being where you can stand on. It's the things that you can interact with and other things that you can't interact with. But still, Chemical Plant also uses great platforms, which, as far as I can tell, it just introduces by just spawning the player in there. The player just starts in there, and then he just moves, in this case, it's to the right. Let me just flip it. And just by moving, the player will interact with it. There's also the parallax effect of the background, but, you know, if you don't make your parallax distinct, distinct enough, your background distinct enough, the player might not even notice the background. So, Blue Storm said that most of your stages are blue. That's a problem. Sonic is already blue. You know? I had this problem too. You need to be able to use other colors as well. It needs to be a thing. Right? But let me go through some other things. Okay, so... Usually in a level, you want to start off easy. You want to introduce your platforms to the player that also means introducing what kind of slopes a level will have. Like, for example, this kind of slope. Or in Green Hill, where they have a more simple kind of slope. You want to introduce those to the player just so they can get somewhat acclimated to it. And maybe even put a place to jump so they know that jumping in this level is a little bit different than the others. You also need to introduce simple gimmicks. For example, right at the beginning of Chemical Plan, you can notice a moving platform right into the sign. It's not really a big deal since you don't really see much of those in the stage. And it's really weird that that's in there. But uh, you want to introduce your players to the gimmicks in a safe way first. 
before you really do anything else. And they need to get acclimated to the stage, and because of that, the first couple of sections of the stage are not very dangerous, and they shouldn't be. If your player dies at the very beginning, you got a problem. Right? So, right. And after you introduce most uh, platforms and gimmicks, uh, you could also introduce enemies in between. So, uh, enemy is. This is not also a f full fledged rule. If you understand what you're doing, you can break out of it. So you can break out of it and do it in other ways. For example, sometimes you can introduce enemies first because the stage is going to be very enemy based and you already introduced most of the platforms. For example, it's a second act and it looks mostly the same. So, okay. So you want to introduce enemies. So how do you do it? Well, don't make your player run into them. Don't make a slope that the player wants to go through and there's like rings and shit and they're like, hells yeah, let's do it. No, because then they're going to hit an enemy, they're going to lose those rings, and they're going to be like, well, what the fuck? And this is this is an enemy, by the way. Let me make the enemy a angry face. Don't make them hit the enemy like this. Instead, you want a slow section for your enemies. So how do you do a slow section? How do you slow the player down? Well... That's a little bit more complicated, but there are several ways you can slow the player down. When you're introducing your uh, your your uh, platforms, one thing that you can also do is add a little speed section. So when you add a speed section, level design tends to go down, move downwards when you add a speed section. So uh, what you can do to exit out of it is not by just adding a a block that just makes on a go and then pfft, just stops. Just stops dead on. You can't do that. That's a bad idea. You have to make the player stop in several ways. One way is to add a slope. It just goes up. And the player gets out of it, has a slower speed. If you if you played roller coaster tycoon before, you might know what I'm talking about. In, in roller coaster tycoon, you have to manage the speed of your roller coaster. And oh, let me just go exit. From speed. So you have to know the speed of a roller coaster. You need to plan around the environment alongside it. And that's somewhat a similar thing you need to do here. But with Sonic, you have luxuries of just setting your speed. Another way is by uh, just doing a. From falling from a speed section, instead of doing a slope, you put on a spring. Could be hidden in the ground. Uh, fucking forces it this a lot and people didn't like it so don't use this sparingly but this is something you can do you can do a little spring over here or if you're gonna do it ice a spring backwards that will send the player backwards but a lot of people don't like this however one thing that you can do is make uh, is make it in a way that going backwards from the spring spring actually keeps your speed as in you go for it, you go forward and then you go backwards but by going up over here you realize that oh I can jump over here so it kind of keeps your momentum it makes you go forward and then backwards and then you jump you keep your speed even though it changes it in some ways right and then after the player has jumped here he lost some speed and after that it you know it's gonna be easier to introduce a sledge and you usually before the player hits an enemy don't don't introduce an enemy in a straight line. Usually put in some kind of ledge on top of it or something that will make the player stop. So the 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 player or the camera of the player will move in an area which they can see the enemy and prepare. They have to be able to see the enemy and prepare beforehand or else the game might not feel fair. And you might not get this thing right here. So, this is three. Alright, this is just some tips and tricks. So, uh, basically, in a lot of senses, you're going to be using ledges a lot. And this might not be a great, greatest idea ever, because Sonic game, Sonic goes fast, and he moves really fast. And uh, in the camera area, the player might not be able to see a cliff coming in 
where there is some kind of platforming challenge, for example, where they have to do this, right? But they might not be able to see it because the camera is moving really fast, right? So one thing you can do is add a little, little ledge or something before this happens so the player is forced to slow down. Another thing that you could do is add, is by making the ledge itself some kind of platforming challenge. Like just uh, having a spring in here, sends you in here, and then we can just, uh, after the spring, we can either go over here, grab a monitor or something, and there's like maybe a spike in here. If I doesn't want to hit the spike, they want to get the monitor. They can jump over here and then they just keep going at the stage and now after they do this, they see the platforming challenge right over here because the camera was already in this area, so they already saw that there was a challenge in there. So they're not gonna just jump willy-nilly over here. They, they already saw it. They ha you have to make sure the player sees it and is able to react to it. So... Yeah. It's just a basic thing around it. And... Okay, so... It's just basic, basic kind of stuff, and there's a problem though with five, but there's an easy way to f uh, fixing the five problem, and it is to make your level design go down because the five problem, or the it's a problem that happened in every single one of my Sonic games, and uh, the only reason why I think it doesn't exactly happen in Mania is because Mania has a freaking sub speed sections, is that level design tends to go up in a Sonic game. Because it's going down in a platforming challenge isn't exactly amazing. It's much easier for a player to just jump to a platform that is a little bit higher than them than it is to jump to a platform that is lower than them. In fact, the problem is also because when you jump, the camera moves up with you. And in this case, when you jump, you might lose sight of the platform after you jump. So you're not going to be able to see where you're landing. So the best thing to do is to just put a platform on top of you. Jumping to jumping to things that are above you are easier because you just have more visibility of them. So it, it it's much easier to do that. So because of that, your level design is going to tend to go upwards. How do you fix this? This is speed. Make Sonic go downhill. Have a little speed section, add some rings. Maybe add some ways you can break out of that speed section by doing a little jump over here and then just go in another round that will just put you somewhere or something like that. You can do a lot of stuff. And yeah, that's what someone said in the chat. That's pretty much what it is. Levels should alternate between speed and platforming sections. As far as I can tell, that is what Mania does for the most part in its level design. It just, it just has a... Uh, a bigger frequency of those things. You're gonna have a pl uh, platforming section, and then suddenly you're gonna go down over here, and there's gonna be like a spring that's gonna set you up, and then from from this spring you have like an enemy, and then after that enemy there's like sp again there's just a, you can just go over here and here and here and oh there's like a monitor over here too in a tree or something like that it has like all shit all over the place which. You can add. You might not have time to do this though, because placing a lot of, a lot of stuff everywhere takes a lot of time. And level design is a very time-consuming process of doing the level, making a game. But it's, in my opinion, it's also one of the most rewarding parts because you just you are already making the damn thing, so you're gonna see a lot of it. And yeah, this is the thing about Mania. It seems they just have a lot of speed in it. It just it, the, the frequency between this and platforming whatever it is it's it's much shorter so for example this curve in one of my games is a lot more like 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 this I would say it just goes up really fast and then something like that like there is a huge part that's, there's a huge speed section this is, would be a speed section uh, and this would be a little bit of platforming where you have to concentrate and then after it's done there is another thing but mania is a lot more closed in, it's a lot more hilly, that's, it. that's just my theory around it. It's up to you really how you want to make it. You just need to make sure that you don't do this kind of shit. Because if you try to go just upwards and with no platforming, this is what happens to your level design. Get it? If you just add speed, 
the player gets bored of it. You gotta make sure they don't. That's why you need those valleys. That's why you need those things. Because then, they, then they'll just get bored of the speed section. And the speed sections won't be very interesting. Don't do this, do this, or this. It's fine. What about gimmicks? Well, I already said, at the start, you introduce the gimmicks. Or you can introduce the gimmicks somewhere else in the stage. You don't have to introduce them at the start. The gimmicks, gimmicks can be introduced anywhere. But what you need to make sure is that you introduce them in a safe way. It has to be safe. You can't introduce a gimmick near a bottomless pit. It's a bad idea. Don't do that. And here is a problem. Here is the thing about Sonic level design. Lots of people like moving platforms and whatnot. Right? But that's a problem. Because then you need to introduce... Okay, what makes a good gimmick? That's... It depends. It really depends on so many fucking factors. Right? Uh, but okay, I'll talk about that later. Uh, okay, so we're gonna... Okay, so here's the thing about multiple paths. Is that you're gonna design a stage with multiple paths, right? But then, you want to introduce a specific gimmick halfway through the stage. Oh well, what, what are you gonna do now? You have several paths. How are you gonna introduce the gimmick in those paths? Well, sometimes what I do is that I just introduce the gimmick in different areas in all of the paths. But the thing is, that makes the paths kind of meaningless because there's repetition. Another thing you can do is have two variances of the same gimmick that are introduced in here and introduced in here and then executed in here and in here. Just make sure that you can't go to the other path or else the player might be a little bit confused. So this is, would be the execution and this would be the start, you know. Or you can... You can introduce the gimmicks way before the, the path even starts splitting. So, do not be too bothered about making a level linear. In fact, uh, making linear levels is not that bad of a thing, especially since you're making a fan game. People are unlikely to play the thing multiple times. In fact, it's okay for you to just have two routes, and then if you want to introduce a new gimmick in the middle of the stage, you introduce it, and then maybe you split it again. And during the split, you you make a cha challenges, and then over here you just end the stage, and or you can just make a linear stage. As long as long as your stage is interesting to play, I really won't mind it being linear, because achieving this kind of curve, this the main or this spark one or whatever, is much easier if you're just ma making a linear level design, because then you can craft the experience directly. The, the downside of level design, the linear level design is that it's not very playable, but it, it can be more well crafted. It, it can it can be more polished than this one. When you make sh a shit ton of routes, you are going to need more time to make them more polished. And because the player can switch in between routes, you need to consider that, put that into consideration. So making a more polished and interesting level is going to be much harder because there is a chance the player might. One player will just take the least possible interesting route and will hate that fucking stage. So, gotta make sure. You also gotta make sure you don't make fucking horrible ass paths. If you're gonna make a path, make sure it's an interesting one. Make sure there is something to it. You know, don't just put just just put a path in there just because it's a path. Like let's say you have like the upper path and it's just like. Uh, not the upper path, you have like the lower path and there's like several things on it and in the middle path there's several things on it but the upper path is just a whole bunch of platforms but come on <laughs> I, it's like players want to stay on it but I want to keep doing this, this is boring I want to go down here and go through the loops make sure the upper path is just as interesting as any of the other paths make them interesting or else you're gonna break this curve you're gonna break all of it you also need to make sure that you still keep this curve even though the players can switch in between paths. So make sure you also control when they can switch paths. Make sure you know when the level design needs to intersect and do its own things. So... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mario now. <laughs>
Right. Let's go. Let's make a stage. Okay, so first of all, there's a little thing you guys need to keep in mind. I'm gonna be opening a text file over here. Hope I can zoom in. No, I can't. Let's just do these in Photoshop. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to, should be good enough. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm gonna explain why uh, why this later, but when making a new image, your resolution has to, and this is a, you don't have to do this, but if you do it, your level, your level design is gonna be a lot faster to make. It's gonna be a lot, a lot easier to make, and you're gonna have a lot less issues with it in the future. It's just a lot, a lot better of an idea. So when creating a new image in anywhere, or just putting it in on Click Diffusion and whatnot, make sure your links are a power of two number. And what is a power of two number? Well, it's two multiplied by a number. So here we go. I'm just gonna throw in a couple numbers that you're gonna be using on, on Unity, not Unity, uh, Fusion. Uh, I'm just going like this. So 128 is one of them, very famous one. But there's also others. So let's go with it. Let me put this. God. Uh, okay, so we start with the possible lowest number is 8. 16. Oh, no, 8. My god, I'm a failure. 16. Okay, this is wrong. Fuck have I done in my text? Where's the auto? What? It's here, right? There we go. Alright, so 16, 32, 64, you might be familiar with those numbers. 128, 256. So, those numbers are the only numbers you should be using when setting a resolution. For example, we can set a resolution to 16 and a, uh, 12, 16 and 128. It, you just you just have to use those numbers, and the reason why is because we're gonna set up a grid system in Click Team Fusion later on that is going to need those numbers, and uh, it's a grid system that snaps to objects that are of uh, of sizes similar to this. So essentially, uh, even if your object has like, for example, is it has like a thing that's over here and there's like a thing that goes over here and a thing that goes over here and there's like a lot of empty space over here don't mind it keep that empty space in because what you need is gridding you need your object to fit into grids and here's a little trick that i've come up with so in photoshop or you can do this in any software really you might want to make an image that is that i made myself my own grid for those things so it's a grid that helps me out a lot with pixel art and level making and to make several platforms and whatnot, I use this grid a lot. So, over here in my patterns, I've made... It's... Uh, patterns? It's this grid, right over here. And if you paint it, you can see how it looks. Right, so let me paint this thing in a much bigger image. So, from the distance... It's not like that. Right. Oh, this is the big grid. Forgot about that because I made one for larger images. Should be this one. Right, 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 right. Amazing. This is a mistake. Just make 128. 128, not a thousand. Right, so when I paint it, I, as you can see, the grid fits perfectly into it. So, what is this grid? So, when you look into it, it's essentially a. I'm gonna select with the box. You can see my selection is 16 by 16. Right, it's this number. But it also has those lines. Those lines mark a 8x8 box. And I use this grid in order to orient myself when making tile sets. For example, I want to make a tile set that has a platform Sonic can walk on. Well, this platform is going to be 8 pixels wide. So it's this. And I just play my platform in there. Right, I also wanted to have borders. So how do I make my borders? Well, I want my borders to be this size. And there we go. Why though? Well, because the original Sonic games were made using this kind of pattern. Uh, the, the original Sonic games are made of small little blocks, all the stages, that are 
usually uh, 16 or 8 by 8 blocks as far as I can tell. So when you make things this size, you're just making them more accurate to the way that things are done in the Genesis game. So let's let's grab a, um, a thing over here. Let me just go here. Okay. Reference. All right, let me just grab any zone, really. Hmm, which one should I grab? Um, let me get... Uh, I don't know which one I'm grabbing. This one. Let's go with the with the beta zone. Right, so... The, all those blocks are 128 by 128 blocks. So if we, if we grab one of them, you can see this this in effect a little bit better. I just let me just use this thing and I remember I said before if I use this this thing and deactivate this box and this box we can select everything of the same color and just delete it and it just gives us what we got. So if we select something that is transparent like this one we just paste it, paste it over there. Also we need to get rid of this color. Right. Now if you look at it let me make it a little bit transparent. It it fits to the grid. This thing from a beta, of a Sonic game that never got released, fits with the grid. You know, uh, sparing a pixel or two. But it fits, and even that slope in the middle, only s it, it's is exactly in this part of the grid. You see? Yeah, and even this block, for example. This little block over there, it's that size specifically. So if if we use this this pattern, we can make things a lot more like the Genesis games. Things won't really be like this, for example, in Genesis game. They will fit to the grid. They will look a lot like this. So if you fit them in, give, give or take a pixel or two, not always it's entirely correct. But there we go. And I think I made my point. Yeah. See that? I just discovered that you're Spanish. Lo <laughs> this ain't Spanish, dude. Too bad. You, you made a mistake. I know that everything over here is in Portuguese. It's a Portuguese and not Spanish, but... Yeah, and by the way... So fucking way, I don't care. Anyways. So here's what you're gonna do. We're gonna set up our basic platforms. Uh, so what do we need to set up our basic platforms? Well, we're making uh, stages in Spark and whatnot. One thing that I used to do is that main platforms usually need to be 128 by 128 just like those. But they could be smaller and you need probably to make them smaller as well. So essentially here's how it goes. We have Uh, we're gonna have a... It's too big. Just make this image bigger. God damn it. So... We gotta... <sighs> fucking zoom. So, we gotta find a way to make our tile set work. And one thing that I basically like to do is just grab a square, split it in half, and do things like this. So why? Why did you do this exactly? Well, there's a reason. First of all, you need your middle tile set. And this is going to be whatever is going to fill in. I'm going to call it the fill tile set. And it's a tile set that fills the whatever, it fills the blanks in a way. It's, it's, the, it's the ground. It's the inner part of the ground with the, you know, as, in a, as opposite of this part, which is the floor. This is where you're going to collide with. So your character collides with this thing in here. Alright, so... And you're also going to need a side floor. Basically a part of the floor where the floor stops. So it doesn't look like... Because here's the thing. In a lot of cases, unless you actually make your floor to just stop in here and have some shading, it's just going to look very odd. So you need something like... Something like something over here. <laughs> no, I didn't explain all that very well, but basically you got a 
a little side floor over here where the floor just kind of stops. As if you're like doing something like this in 3D. It's like a platform of sorts. Right? And this is this region. It's where your floor is just kind of curves away and it, it's not really a part of the layout you're going to be interacting with in a way. I don't know if I explained myself very well in there. It's hard to explain those concepts that I already had memorized in my mind for several years, but... Yeah, and this side is the... as opposed to this side is, is a wall. And walls can exactly be the same as the ground, ground thing, but try not to. And a wall is basically a continuation of the fill. And it's just, just like with the platform, the platform should continue in the fill. They should be uh, mutually placeable in a way. You can even have like something in the way so you don't know that it's interacting. Right? You don't know that it's like a different object. They need to sort of meld into each other so it doesn't feel like it's a different object. Uh, and for example, over here you need something like shading or something like that just to make sure it's... It's a wall. <laughs> you can have anything really in here, and you you're gonna find several wall sprites and wall blocks or whatever when you get into this area. For example, this right over here, you can see as a wall, right? You know, it, walls you can also walk on because of a slope, right? And for example, this, with the exception of this thing, this thing, this specific thing over here. This is a walkway that continues into the fill, and what is the fill in this in this zone? Oh, well, we can find it, and it's one of the, these blocks, for example. It, it, this block, for example, even has a wall already in it. So you can add a wall into a fill, but just keep in mind it's gonna look like a whole bunch of like several walls stacked together. It's not gonna look like just one massive metal structure, which is what you might want it to be. Those are object pieces. Yeah, this, this is a floor, for example. Right, this is a floor piece. And um, let's see if I can find anything else that make sure, makes it look like a fill. Like this is also a fill. It's just a whole bunch of metal blocks just everywhere, in a way. Another fill over here. Same thing as before, really. There's also, too, the ceiling one. I don't know, you also need this thing for over here. And let me see if I can find some of that, too. And you need a ceiling. What, the ceiling can be whatever, really. It's basically the opposite of a floor. And this thing fits really well as a ceiling, for example. It's also used over here. You know, you don't exactly need a ceiling as long as your fill has a bottom to it. Then again, you don't want it to feel just like a whole bunch of blocks stacked together. Unless that's your goal. If you want to do that, that's perfectly okay. But you might want a ceiling block like that. So, for the side block, for example, here we have one. This is my little platform. See how... There's a little shading in here, like this thing just kind of curving away in 3D surface. Yeah, for example, this is a this is a ground floor that has the sides already in it. So yeah, or you could just make your sides like this. There are several ways you can do it and whatnot. Right? This is another ceiling too. You can also make add add like slopes to your ceiling so it looks a little bit more fancy. Right, so whew, now what we're gonna do about well, slopes. So when making slopes for my stages, I usually just plan them, plan them around. Like I basically draw random shapes to get like what kind of slope I want the stage to be. But that's because I'm usually making my own slopes. Since we're not gonna be making slopes, we're just gonna be using slopes that the level design handles to us. So it is basically gonna be it. So let's set up or our stage styles. Okay, so let's first try to set up the middle, the fill itself. So I'm just gonna make a 128 by 128 image. I'm gonna add my pattern, which by the way, uh, I'm gonna make this pattern available in my server. I'm gonna go into the help channels, uh, Sonic Worlds, I'm gonna paste it in there, and I'm gonna pin it. So you guys can find it. Also I'm gonna type uh, Sonic Worlds Worlds Pattern So you can search it if you want to Later And there we go Right, so 
We're gonna set this thing up, and the thing that I wanna do, like to do sometimes, is just go into images, hue and saturation, and just make it darker or something like that, so it's easier to see. It really depends on what you wanna do. Like some, for some scenarios, you might wanna make it lighter. That's why I don't have the dark, dark one already being the main one, just so you can change it into the whatever you want it to be, basically. So let's grab a tile set. I want this to be the fill part of it, but I don't want it to be just like this thing. I want it to be a little bit more fancy. So what I can do is that I can grab blocks from it. One thing that I can do is just get like a thing like this, paste it, and then based on this, just get stuff from it. So we can see several objects in here. One thing that we can see is this thing. And the thing that's below it as well. God damn it. Right, so there's just the, the little blocks that are below it, like those. Those could be useful for making a collage of a level. So we can just move those over there. And this thing, we could use them, but let's not do that. Maybe delete it. I'm gonna keep this other thing over here and delete this too. Make sure you're fit with the, with the pattern itself. You see over here, there's a break in the, tile slant, in the tiling. So, yeah, good. A lot more zoom. There's a little break in here. You see over here. So, yeah. And we can just put them this thing anywhere you want to. Right. So, first of all, we need some colors. And uh, well, the thing is not exactly that much attached to the pattern so one thing that we can do is just change the pixel sizes for one of them oh no it is i just made a mistake okay since this thing is very dark i could just make them, this thing lighter so just paint it over yeah there we go lighter pattern will work for this okay so i want to change the color of the, the purple things well, how will I go about doing that? Well, one thing that I can do is just select everything that is not the uh, the, uh, the blue thing in the middle, whatever that thing is. I don't know what that is. But I want my stage to be green, so I can just select that. I'm going to images, uh, not images, go into layers, go into adjustment layers, and then we go into a gradient map. And then we just click OK. Now we have set up a gradient map. And in fact, the gradient map has a mask. This is a mask. And we can just paint this mask by clicking on it. Click on anyone else, you just click on the mask, and you can paint it over. Right, I know I kind of fucked it over, but OK. Basically, we're going to get this thing. And if you click on the mask, and did a select your and delete it, and there we go. Now, what, what we're doing with this gradient mask is that we're coloring this thing based on the gradient. And here's what we can do. Okay, so you see this gradient over here. The interesting thing about it is that this gradient is essentially your color palette because the the white over, over here, or this direction here, represents the colors that are lighter, and here it's the colors that are darker. In fact, if you want, we can literally make the reverse. We can make the lighter color, the color darker and have this. We can do whatever we want, but basically what we're going to do over here is that I want a similar theme to what I was doing in Simple World, so... Essentially, I want a darker blue shade color, of sorts. And I want a green color for the t tile itself. This gives us a lighter green, like here. But this might not be to my liking, so I might just drag this over here. Drag this thing over here. And over here, I could just add a white something of the sort, so I can get a shine over here. It's not exactly needed, but you could use it for several things. So, right. So I got a color. And as you can see, this thing is affecting this layer as well, because the gradient map affects everything that is below it. So how do I make sure it doesn't affect what's below it? Well, we'll right-click the map and you make, a, you make it a mask. I don't know what's the name of the button in English, but basically, essentially... There we go, we just changed the color and now it kind of looks like it's Metallic Madness colored. But it's not Metallic Madness. Right, so before we do any of that, let me just... Release the mask. And what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna grab... ...from this 
thing and we're gonna just make our, our fill collage. And I could use this thing as well. It's a thing in the middle of it. Right. It was added as a mask. We don't have to use that. So. Yeah. Oh no. The string should come back. It's back, isn't it? It's good. Don't, fuck fa don't fucking fail on me. Not today. This is one of the most important parts. Okay, so we can grab something else as well. Just, just to add into it. And again, most blocks in Sonic games are around th that size, so... Make sure you make them fit into it. For example, just grab that thing over there. Okay, I can fit this somewhere. I think. Right. Oh. I rescaled it. Don't do this at home. <laughs> okay, so when you rescale things, you see an option over here. Keep it on the first one, which is nearest neighbor. If you don't do that, this is what happens. Your thing becomes blurred. Don't do it. Not a good idea. So... Right, let me... Do I have anything else I need to grab? Not really. Right. We can also rotate our things by pressing Ctrl T, we can going to transform and over here put it in your nearest neighbor and I think if you rotate it and you hold control you know a shift you can just rotate it like this so now I can put it over here and to the back see layers over there it's a very good thing make use of it there we go now I need a thing to be putting on the sides over here uh, I might want that I just don't know exactly what, but this should do it. Making your levels look good is a very important part of making your own, your own Sonic game. So... Eh, make it look good. If you have it towards the nearest neighbor, the stretching shouldn't be too bad when you do it. But it can look pretty bad, so don't do it too much. Right, so... Okay, this is it. We got our own little fill. And if you apply our gradient map, everything becomes green. This could be the desired result, but it also may not be. So one thing that we can do is just select the parts that we don't want it to be in there over here just go select it and delete it in this case the map is invisible so it's not going to show up right mm. right is there anything else I want to change right, right over here You don't have to be absolutely perfect, but depending on what you're doing, you're gonna have to do some precision. And if you look into it, there's some blue colors over here that aren't like that. So a trick you can do, just click on the layer itself, and using the, the wand again, the magic wand, right? You deselect all the options over here. So you hold shift, you click on the blue color, it selects all the same colors. And this one, I'm gonna click this color, it just selects all of those too, but that's not really a problem. And we also click in here and in here. Right now it's also selecting color outside of it, so you might as well just control Z that and then select those individually. And for some reason, colors here are weird. God damn it. Use the box selection, it's very good. Right, so now we go into the ready map itself and delete it. Now all the blue remains intact. Well, here's the thing, we might want to change the blue. 
So what, what should we do? Well, we can just... If you hold the magic wand in the gradient map and click on it... Oh, this it doesn't work. So if you hold control and you click on the layer itself, now it selects all the map areas of the gradient map. So what we do is that we click the selection tool and we click select, select the reverse or whatever it is, the second option. And it's going to select all of our parts like that. So all we can do is everything with layers, adjustment layer, and go into another gradient map. Right, click OK. And now we have a gradient map for that region specifically. And I want to make it into a reddish region. Let's make it red. So the blue shading needs to be like bluish. Right. Come on. I'll delete my color like that. And then this thing, I'll make it like an orange. Maybe this isn't that amazing. Right. There we go. Got a, got a little color going in there. Might have just the green a little bit. Just could get a better thing out of it. Make it like more bluish. Harsher shading. You can adjust the shading as well. You can put a black right at the end of it. So those parts still become black. Right, so going back in this, this is just about tweaking and making the colors feel right. Because here's the thing. Uh, later, we're going to save this image and then we're going to be using it for all of our other image. So we have the same color palette, almost. There we go. We got a little techno sort of... Like, this is sort of a nighttime color. Because during daytime, usually parts that are fully black like this would be lit by sunlight. So, uh, by the way, this song is Level of Gate 3 Headquarters. It's from Rouge the Bat and, and Sonic Adventure 2. So, this is more of a nighttime color, really, that is lit by like one light, but there's not a lot of amb ambient light. And ambient light is essentially skylight from this whole dome that is the sky reflecting into the into the thing itself. Once you have a skylight, then the colors itself look a bit different. For example, the, it wouldn't really, it would be a lot more lit up instead of being total darkness how it is over here. Like completely black. All right? So this is gonna be a nighttime, nighttime stage from what I can see. In nighttime stage, the colors are usually very much harsher. Like the light, light enough parts are lit by lights that are usually around the region like in the city for example so or the moon for example so you're gonna be seeing those light lighting up parts but the darker parts you're gonna only gonna be seeing them in slight detail so, so here's what you do you're gonna go into save and here we're gonna just save it as a PSD and keep it keep this one in a PSD so we can keep the gradient maps and use them in other images so here I'm going to just call this T1 for tile 1. This is a tile. And then go ahead and save as a PNG. I'm just going to be calling T1. Now we need to make our floor. So what is the size of it? It could be anything really. In this case I'm going to be making my floor 64 by 64. Since it's an industrial area. No, not 64. Let's make it uh, 64 in length and 32 in height. So it's this small, actually. So what are we going to be using for this? We're going to go in here and you're going to be grabbing this little thing. Just grab the whole thing, it's fine. Usually it should fit. Fits perfectly. Almost. There's a little bit more to it. Which we can show up by just dragging it upwards. But we don't really need to. Let's just drag some of it upwards. By upwards, by some of it, I mean probably the whole thing. This is a little bit of a bigger image. So. Okay. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete this. There we go. I don't really have had to do this, but still, 
In this case, I want to preserve the yellow color. So I'm going to click on it, including the white, which is also shared by other colors. So one thing that we can do, since this selected all the other regions, we can hold shit. We can hold alt, and there's going to be a minus next to our little, little cursor, and then we select this whole area, and it deselects it. Now, if you Ctrl C and Ctrl V it, we just have the yellow over there. Uh, so here's what you can do. We can go back into this image and we can just drag our gradient map over here. In this case, it's not fully well because it's in this layer and it's not fully painted. There we go, our little gradient map. If you want the red in there as well, you can just put the red. You can, you can just paint it over like that, which kind of looks cool, but let's delete some regions so you can make them green as well. And delete this. And then if you get a, which by the way for pixel art you, you want to use the pencil, not the thing, and then just select the regular brush. And then you can paint this region white, so it will have the gradient map. And by the way you can paint things gray as well if you want to. Painting gray will do a thing. <laughs> There we go. So we got a little ground floor over there. It's not the most amazing thing in the world. Let me see how it looks without it. Mm, you might want to make that part in the middle not red. So... There we go. So this is our, one of our ground floors. I'm just gonna call it T2. Right, and you can save this one in PSD as well if you want to. It's not entirely necessary, but we can if we, if we want to. Right, so this stage has some detail to it, and you might want the detail, so how do we add that detail? Well, you're gonna find it, just grab it, and now we need a new image. Now we have a, somewhat of the size of the detail itself, so the best thing we need to do is just make this a, the length and size of one of those numbers, and you just place the detail over there. It's best that you do it like this as well, because placing details is very time consuming. And since we have the gradient maps, this is the, this is the green one for this one. It's just a little detail, it's, if you're going to just run past a thing like this, it's not very likely that the player is actually going to collide with it and have an issue with it. And think it's not an, like a, a collidable object, it's rare that the player is going to think this is called a collidable object. So. And they're just called D1 for detail. Right, so what do I need now? We might need a wall. So this thing is perfect for a wall. Right. If you can go over here, we can already see it's 32 by 128. And if we create our image, you can see that 32, 128. It's, a, it's that size already specifically. So what we can do over here it has this blue color in it. What we can do is that we can select it and make this the, the red would be needed so far. So it might not be why selecting all of it. Mm. We select it out anyways. And then we use shift to do this. This is kind of boring, but it's not as boring as the thing we were doing before. So, now we can just drag the gradient map. Not this one. This one. And select inverse, delete. Select inverse, and just paint it over. And if we select inverse over here, we can get this one. There we go. Now I have a wall. Now, do we need a ceiling and uh, a side thing? We might need. So let's call this T2. T2. There's already a T2, so. T3. Mm, and now we need uh, a side wall in, in this. I think it, I think it deleted that image. But basically, just to grab a little block. Should mostly do it. 
so let me find out something that we can use as that. This could be useful, but I want something that's more universal. Oh no, this will do. This will totally do. Let me check the size. 32 by 32, exactly what I needed. So, over here. Just for just great aim maps, left just like before. I already know how to do those kinds of thing, re things really fast too, so... Just me being me. Whatever. So in this case we can call this... T... T4. And... To get lazy with it... I'm gonna get a wall... And... <laughs> This is something you can do. Not recommended, but you can. Oh god. Rotate at 90 degrees. We got ourselves a ceiling, guys. Yay! <laughs> so, let's call it T5. Now, one thing that we might have, might have a problem with is that we might have since this is our fill, we might sometimes need a fill that's not this big. So one thing that we can do is... Uh, we can press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. You memorize that, Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. See what happened there? We created a whole new image that is the, is the merger of all of our, our layers, but it's... It's just... It's just a new image, you don't have to actually lose anything, you don't lose anything in the process, right? But now, we're gonna create a 64 by 64 image. Right, so it doesn't exactly match, as you can see this tile is kind of just moving out of it. So maybe we can find a, a, a place or somewhere in this tile set that we can have a nice little tile. It might not even be possible. This could do it. Here, there we go. No, no, none of it, dude. <laughs> so, I could just best thing, best thing really to do would be just to. By the way, if you hold out while using the, ever using any any tool, you can just pick up a color, and it th that color will become whatever color it is over here. So, pretty useful. No, 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 there's, there's one pixel left. And this is pixel art in a nutshell. Mind your pixels. I'll do it like some arrows and just have a shit and there's three pixels everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so when we resize that, got that thing. Doesn't exactly look amazing, but you should do it. So, go here and save as a T. T6. Right, now we're gonna move on to slopes. Okay, so in this specific tile set, what do we got? We got a couple of them, right? We also got those upwards and downwards facing slopes, but so far I just want some regular upward, upwards facing slopes, and we got those and we got those. Well, which one can I use? I'm gonna use the this one and I'm just gonna flip it. In this case, really we can actually legitimately just grab this one because it's already set for us. Go into nil. Uh, come on. And just flip the damn thing. There, we got ourselves a nice ass uh, slope. So if you just click in here and delete it. There. So again, as we were doing before. Uh, we can grab certain colors we can use. Great it, man. I just throw this one in there. And this one in there. 
This one I'm gonna make invisible, and this one I'm gonna delete this. Delete the whole thing. And then I'm gonna select the slope itself. Which is, I think, one more pixel down there, so. I select and paint it. It's painted a sort of like metal color, like a rusty metal of sorts. And with this one, I'll just delete all of it. Select this region and this region. And just paint it. Got it, guys! And also, you can just delete this region too. Let's see how it looks. Okay. Reasonably okay. So. Now we can just go ahead and save. And we just need one slope facing. We can have more slopes if you want to like reshade the slopes into a different color. I did this for Spark, but for a fan game, this might not be entirely necessary. It's good that you would do that, but not in this case, because in Cooking Fusion, you could just flip them around and it should work for the most part. So we have our slope and now we might want something else like this kind of slope, like just a simple upwards facing slope. It just makes the player go up a little bit, or we might want something else. Mm. Mm. Those slopes over here, they have a problem, they have this guard rail. So we're gonna have to remove the guard, guard rail on our own and then add the guard, guard rail as a detail on top of it. Here's another little slope we can use. As you can see when we add it, usually the size of the image is already set for us. In this case, 64 by 64. It's great. So, let's add the gradient maps. In this case, there might be an interesting way of adding it. You can color everything this color, but if you use the circle selection, just hold it. You click in, go into circle, go over here, hold control and shift, and select it. Oh, and make sure you have this disabled. Select it, and I think we can get a selection that is almost exactly what we needed. So we delete that. Keep that in. Put this thing in there. Select reverse, and delete it. There we go. It's not perfect, there's a little pixel over there. But we did it. We did it, guys. And we can just flip the, that thing in game as well. T8. I'm gonna show you how a completed one looks like from Spark. This is from. Uh, I'm just kidding. The Desert Stage, Mar Mari Desert. Just start, check out how many, sh how much shit we got, including all those subfolders, which has the second half of the stage, which already has several sprites with uh, layers and whatnot, and there's also a lot more. Stage gimmicks, enemies, and boss, the boss area and whatnot. There's several platforms and layers in the individual backgrounds and stuff that you have to, to add and keep in mind. And this is the actual tile sets by themselves. All usually made of a specific thing. And this stage actually has like those boxes specifically, I just put them everywhere and I have them the size made specifically and the shade specifically made so I can place them, for example, inside of this region over here and it doesn't look like absolute trash. Right? And in those things too. So this stage is essentially made of very small parts that look pretty alright as a whole and you might be doing this with this one as well. So, yeah. So, let's close this one. Let's grab some other tile sets from some other stages. Cause this, those are kind of boring. Let's get something else. Do you have anything else saved? This is, I think, Wacky Workbench. What can you get from Wacky Workbench? That is interesting. Not much, actually. <laughs> Neck? What, what neck? You can get this chick over here. No, let's not get the chick. Turns out it's a dude and we don't even know. 
Right, so... Well, we ain't got much, but... I'm gonna do a little bit of a hackery. So we're gonna grab, grab this thing over here, which I think looks kinda cool. Oh, it's on Ack. That's probably just a meme. Alright, so we're gonna make a big image. This one's, this one's gotta be big. Here's a little trick I do, alright? So here we got the image that we want. Right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna upscale this image twice. So 200 by 200. Except over here, we set it to uh, nearest neighbor. And it's this one. Now we have a double sized image, so essentially we're 100% zoomed, but we can see pixels. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna control T this image. We're gonna go uh, in D form. And then now it's, it's like this, and we can do several things with it. Right, but what we can do is that we can go over here, right, this menu over here, and we can select several things like this one. Oh, check this shit out. Check out what we can do. Now, we got ourselves a little problem though. I'm gonna go back to the original image of Control Z. So we're gonna add a little pattern. I need to make sure it works to make sure our image is synced up with it. And it is. Let me make it a little bit lighter, so. Now we're gonna double size the image. Right, so now we're gonna grab this thing. Deform. There's also an, an arch deformation, which is a very cool. Check out what, what it does. There's several deformations you can apply to the image. You go in deform and then you just go over here. Uh, but we're gonna be using this one. So we need to sync it up with that over there. I think this would do. And apply it and then you make sure it's synced. So it is synced. Gonna make sure it's synced up over there as well. Great, now what do we do? We go into transform and then we do 50%. This is a percentage by the way. And I click OK. It doesn't always turn out all that well. In this case it actually became pretty deformed. Maybe I should have done it this way. Yeah, like check this shit out. Everything here is deformed for some reason. So let me just try something else. Oh, okay. Now it's better. Yeah, now check it out. It's a, lot, it's a lot more smooth. A lot more well done. You just gotta get the things right, because it was a 500 by 12 image, which is the double of this. So I doubled it and it became a, a 1024. So I just changed it back to 256. Oh, I did 50 and 60? Oh, fucking hell. Oh, well. So what we can do over here is that we can just grab our image as long as our image fits in this pattern over here, it's going to do well in the in the thing. So in a way, I lied about this. This is just a guideline. But I didn't really lie because technically we're still doing things right if we select an image that is the size of our pattern. In this case, you can just copy and paste new image. For example, it is 256. The size is 256. And if you paint it, you can see that it still fits. The bottom is still there. There we go. Got a little image. This is a very li little interesting thing we can do. Now I want to save the yellow. Not black though. Save the yellow color. And I just control C, control V into another layer. It's right over there. And I can just apply gradient maps to however we wish. In this case, right, this thing is though, since uh, the stage we're, we're using used use a different color palette, a more darker one in this sense, it's not gonna look exactly the same. So one thing that we can do is make, either make this stage the same exact color palette as this one, or we can approximate, but we're gonna make this stage the same exact color palette. 
how we're gonna do that, it's not too hard. So let me zoom in a little bit more. Might as well just... I need to make this visible for me, for me the most part. Just leave this thing on the side. So, this is the middle color. I'm gonna grab the middle color over here. Not the color from the gradient map, the color from that layer. And then just paint it over. Using the same method as before. Here's the lighter parts, the highlights. You can just make this pink color. It's actually a pink color. As you can see. Well, she probably made it white. Mm. Should probably make this part the pink. Then again, he uses, he uses less color, so converting this isn't exactly going to be the easiest job in the world. I could just make the white pink. It's okay. Now we make this, this first layer of shading. The first layer of shading over here, and it's this one. It doesn't look exactly like the best thing in the world, but... And then we do the next layer of shading, the next layer of shading over there. And it's this third color. Did it work? Yes, so. Because when we apply it, we get mostly the same result. And there we go. Got ourselves a little slope. So we're just gonna call it instead. I'm gonna call it an S1. Because it's a slope. But I didn't have to. Now let's just get one more. Uh, no, I don't think we need to get any more slopes. Now we need to get some, some foreground detail. And foreground details are useful because if you don't have foreground details, well, all of your platforms are just floating in the air. So let's just go some zone, bucket workbench. Let's grab some foreground detail, shall we? Like this, for example, but there's no... You can just make it a solid block, so it needs to be something better than that. No, no red for that one, Spazzy. Those blocks are nice for a foreground detail. So we might have to do a little thing. Oh, but, oh, oh, oh god. What the hell happened here? Damn. Those blocks are gonna be good for it. It's essentially just this. Right, so we're gonna make 128 by 128 image, and we're gonna make a collage out of those blocks. So first of all, add a little pattern. So... Someone asked in the Sonic Worlds chat, how do I add this, add this pattern to worlds? Well, you just... I'm doing it via the pattern brush. But just copy and paste it. Uh, you, you got the image. Just copy and paste this into your image. You don't have to do it in the same way I'm doing it. So, gonna go over here. I said the same thing we did it before. I'm not sure if this is gonna work exactly. Eh. You know what? Just, let's just, just use those colors directly instead of actually using that. Even though it's probably not a very good idea. Oh, and you should probably make it red too, what the hell am I doing? Since the red isn't the color you're mostly interacting with. The red is usually the color of the background. So... Well, not the color of the background, but the color of things you aren't interacting with. So it's actually okay if, to make red the color of foreground objects that you don't really uh, interact with. A detail object. So, let's go for it. I made it just pure black, holy shit. There we go. I shouldn't make this invisible. No. God. Okay, so what are we gonna do over here? Should have something in there. Let's 
leave this part. Add this thing. Let's flip it. If you right click it, if you right click it and then you can just go flip horizontally or flip vertically. How long have we been here? Oh man, almost two hours, goddamn. Right. This should be almost enough. Making tiles is incredibly important. It's the basis for your stage, basically, so... I kind of have to. So... There we go. Got a little shitty pattern. Maybe just add a little more. There. Now disable this layer. Don't forget to do that. I'm gonna call it D2. There we go. We have made our foreground. So we're gonna apply this inside of the engine before you start working on the background. So disable this. Just close it. It's fine. Okay. So now we're inside of uh, of Clickton. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over here. And just check. This is a global object that is. So here in test zone, we're gonna right click it and we're gonna clone it. And now we're gonna name, change the name to one and let's just name it something else. Like Grinty. The <laughs> Green City. Uh, it's called the Green Zone. N not so Green Zone. Not so Green Zone. There we go. And then they're gonna double click it and you notice it's the same stage. Right, but here's a little setup you're gonna need. Okay, so if you, if you click on this button, it's gonna show the grid. Grid can make things low, by the way, so keep in mind. Right, so if I zoom in a little bit, you can see the grid a lot better. And everything is applied to this grid and it's fixed to it. This is the 8x8 grid that I was talking about, for example. You go over here in grid setup, this button, and then in the origin, you keep it at zero. And in size, you keep it at 8 by 8. Color, it doesn't really matter, but you need to have a snap to grid over here. So, and after you've done this, you can disable this thing and just have this thing, snap to grid, active. It needs to be active or else your images can go like anywhere. Like this, and it's going to be really hard to sync them up. And some stations in several games are like this. They have like tiles all over the place and then Sonic has to go through this little, little gap over here. It's not very good for the engine. The, engi the engine itself might, do, might freak out a little bit. So make sure it's straight by having the thing. By having the grid. And not only that, but the grid is made so several things will, you know, apply to each other. For example, this middle over here is in, is in sync with the grid, so I can just do this. And now we can vary the pattern a little bit by not just making it 1, 2, 1, 2, but 1, 1, 2, for example. Right, and this thing too doesn't really apply to it. The way I did that. Those are assets from Rayno Complex from Masonic game. Masonic game, uh, from Spark. Now, okay, so here we have the background. We can make it invisible, and we're gonna do so so we don't touch it. We're gonna do this with other layers as well. So we're gonna grab this, all of it, whole stage, and you're gonna move them the fuck away. Right, so you're gonna get the water level object, which is not in Delta as far as I can tell. I'm gonna move it way down here. Probably around this area. 
fact, if we click over here, we can make the stage a little bit bigger. So in the, this is regular size, we can make it 2,000 by 10,000. The, not 1,000, 10,000. Uh, the maximum size you can go is 30,000. As far as I know, anyways. Uh, so... I'm not sure if we're gonna need water for a level, so I might as well just put the water level way down there. So it's not even a thing. Right, so those things, which are off the frame, you always keep those things off the frame. You just drag them somewhere. It doesn't need to be off the stage itself, because you're gonna need those things. You're gonna, that's why I don't tell you to use this, because you're gonna keep all those objects that you need inside of the stage and you're gonna move them to where you need them to be. So this thing, which is our previous stage, we're gonna just move this somewhere else. We don't need to delete all of it. Deleting all of it is in fact a bad idea because you're gonna be prompted some events, for example, if I delete it, this is gonna show up. And this is not very good. Do not, do not click this button. Just don't. This thing will delete objects that have code attached to them and this will fuck up your code. Don't do this. So don't avoid deleting stuff that you added in and added code to it. Just keep it somewhere else. It's like this. And keep this in mind. This area that I added over here is where your tile set are. So if you want to add a new tile set, just double click current one. Go over here. Double click it. Okay. There we go. It's right over there. Now we can make this one. Replace this one with this. Now we can just move it around and just kind of keep it there. Also, remember this thing? Collision with box. Yeah, since, since those objects are boxes, you might as well tag this in. If they're not boxes, it's best to don't do that. This image is a platform. We can clone this one. It's better if we clone it. But let's just replace it with something else. And it's just going to be this thing. It's the same thing, right? However, in this case, we're going to duplicate this frame. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Get the paint color. Make this 100, size 100. Capacity 40. And then here, in, it do, we don't look, just leave it like that. And now I have a platform. Because the platforms, as you know, you can pass through them pretty much. This thing, so it's level detail. It's a, essentially a backdrop, which the obstacle type is set to none, instead of obstacle. Right, and there's a specific event in code, by the way, if you need to show this. It's this one, you have collisions and overlapping a backdrop. This is what we, we use to detect collisions with backdrops. And if you want to make an active collidable object, you have to go over here and add group zero. This is the doors group, I don't know what it does, but this is a breakable object thing. Alright, so let's grab this thing and make it this thing. Just add it over there. This thing is well, essentially the same, so this, to make it into the wall. Now we just add it over here, and then we duplicate it and clone it. And then we make this the ceiling. I'm just gonna add it over there as well. So, oh, let me zoom out. When you zoom out, you can actually see more sometimes. So, here are the slopes. They are right down here. I can move them up a little bit. But, okay, so what, what, what can you do with them? I just grab them. Grab one of them. They're backdrops, by the way, so it's not that big of a deal. Just grab this thing. Yes, look okay. And it's right over there. But now, we do the same thing with this one. And then I click this button, flip horizontally. It should work for the most part. And if it doesn't, you've got to remember to flip the alpha channel as well. So now we got that. Now we can just go over here and also add this one. Flip it. Flipping like this is not entirely recommended. In my case, for, uh, for Spark, I did in fact have like different shaded slopes for certain angles so it would look better but you know I don't I always have to do this for a thing and it doing something like that really uh does not waste your time but just it's just tough let's replace the detail with that and there's more there's more slopes so we can plumb this object which by the way this is just a backdrop with obstacle and no collision with box so, go over here, and we have this one. 
can I do them inside too? That's funny. Copy and paste it. And by the way, the names just become backdrop 11, backdrop 8. And this is what they were before anyway, so it's fine. So, this is just how I organize things. And I can also move them away a little bit just so we don't have to do different objects. And yeah, we're almost done in here setting those things up. Now we also need to set up the other slope. It's this one. This one. Put it over here. Clone it. Then flip it. Let's put it over there. Now we got ourselves almost a fully complete level set. That we, we can already make a whole level with this set, this kind of set. It might not look the most impressive thing in the world, but it can be done. So, there we go. My also need to duplicate this detail, clone it, and then change this thing into the other detail that we had. This thing. It's kind of hard to grab when an object is, is this small, but... Alright, so, let's get to it. Let's get to just making the title set. We still need to make the backgrounds, but let's just do this for now. How long have I been? Hmm. Is the stream going? It says the video output is low, but and it's not anymore. Okay. So, all right, let's do it. So we have we have everything down here that we need. So we don't need to go over here and grab it. Make sure to use the spacebar. To move yourself around. It's very useful. So we're gonna grab this thing, put it over here. Also there is a problem that may happen is that sometimes you might copy an object that you have made a change to, for example over here, for example I say I copy an object, then I make a change, I click on a button, click on something, and then I paste the object, it's not gonna paste the same object you had before, it's gonna paste as a new object. And you can have like several new copies instead of having the same objects. That is not gonna be very fun. So keep that in mind. Right. There's also another platform I forgot about. Which is the... Which is this style. So... Right. Now... Let me just... Move this... Over here a little bit. Over here we don't really need the, the wall and whatnot. Make sure we're on, we are on layer 3, and make sure things are synced up, synced up so you know what you're doing better. Move them to the right spot so they can have like, space over there for the wall, and then you can use those two things. So far we're making a really boring looking stage so far, but this is, this is mostly okay, we can make this look more interesting as we go on. I can add this thing over here, and I can add some... Uh, some variation to it to make it look more interesting. Like this, or just not that. Right, we can also, uh, since it's a metallic looking stage, we can have ceilings, which are very, very useful. And they add a lot to, to a stage like this. Not this thing. So, we might even want to. And I can mix up the pattern a little bit by putting them on top of each other. Just make sure you do it right. Those things might look a little bit awkward. So... Yeah, make sure to keep to the pattern. For example here, you see that those things are lining up. This part of that one. So you can just order to back, remember that? Order. Order to back, order to front. Remember that. And we just fill things up. Just fill space. This is what the fill is for. It's for filling space. You can select multiple objects as well. When you position, when you copy and paste things over here, as you can see. It's fine, it's completely fine, but when you position it on the border, sometimes it does this. You see? They're like overlapping each other. I don't know why it does that. Stupid. But it does do that. 
Uh, also, hello chat, are you guys still there? Is anyone really watching this stream? Right, make sure the the fill is enough so you don't see this empty region. So the player's eye is kind of fooled into thinking this is a completely filled stage. Even though it never is. Oh, nobody is seeing it. Okay. As confirmed by someone in the chat. See that? Things line up so it doesn't look horrible. No, we can have a slope over there just so we can add a little bit more variance to it. No, we can play around our tile sets a little bit just to make it a little bit more fun. And then in the middle over there, we might just want to add this thing. And you can play around in the tile sets like this as well. Make them varied, make them look pretty, make them look interesting. And since there's a slope over here, some people might be inclined to do a spin dash. So one thing that I want to do is to move this thing somewhere so I can have them have some kind of platform over there. Where the player can go and get something, for example. I can also use the ceiling as a ground layer. I'm gonna do that though. That's inappropriate. See over here, the lineup, again, it works because they line up. That's why I tell you guys, make sure it lines up. Here, it's not really all lining up all that much, so we have to move. However, there's not enough space for the player. You also have to keep in mind the player's speed and how far they can go, because sometimes Things might be a little bit weird. Use this order to back in order to front a lot to your advantage. It's very useful. So yeah. Now we can add some detail using this thing. It's, there's no, no collision, no collision in the box, none of those things. So we can add it. I'm really not sure if this works, I haven't actually tested it. The pattern itself, so new territory, I guess. There we go. And by making the player start around this, we can actually tell the player that no, you don't actually collide with this, it's fine. spent all this time just making this little section of the stage, but it's fine. That's how things roll. And now if I click play... Six. There we go. Why is it so slow? Oh wow. I don't think I've done anything. It's super slow. Alright, let me check the number of objects. 200 objects, it's just slow for some reason. In fact, let me check the frame rate. It's 30 FPS. Huh. Start to hear me? Okay. <sighs> so, shit is low for some reason. I don't, I think I know why, but. I haven't really done anything to make it slow, so this is fairly weird. I'm gonna do a little test. Still slow. This is this is the thing. Yeah, clicking goes slow sometimes. Yeah. W what do you do to fix it? Cause I don't know why it does that. This is the reason why Spark 
has this issue. This is why. And now we're seeing it happen over here. So you know what? I'm gonna destroy the controller extension and see what happens. Now it goes fast. This is why. <laughs> of course. Now which one of them is responsible for it? It's 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 tripad one, isn't it? It's tripad one. Huh. Why? Is there anything I can do in Joypad 1? Hmm. I'm just going to ignore. Oh! So it's this event. It's like polling for inputs. Yeah, so if I disable Joypad 1, which means this might fix the slowdown issue for a lot of people in Spark, but not all of them, unfortunately. Several of them won't have the issue fixed because this isn't the, all the entirety of the problem. There's more to it, but... Alright, so there we go. We got a little stage. The background, though, has the same color as our stage. So it's going to be a little bit hard to tell what, what is which. But here we go. It made some... Oh, see what happened there? Let's see if it can replicate it. There's a way to fix that, by the way. Okay, so you saw what happened, right? There's no need for me to go into much depth about it. What we can do is that we can use one of these. Just let me copy it. Yep, it's the joypad. I've always suspected it. Seems to be, seems to be it. Really. All right, let's go. And now it's not gonna happen, really. But there's also some other issues too. Yeah, for example, this thing it completely stops the player from grabbing any angle, so it kind of just remains at an angle at the end of it. So I think you might want to do is just put it upwards a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Okay, so before I actually get into level design, we need to do the background. And I'm also going to be adding a tile card into the stage because I think that's something we're going to need. So let's check out the background. What is the background? Oh, it's just a whole bunch of backdrops. However, Yeah, that's the thing. When, uh, so, okay, Blue Storm, one way to fix it is by just extending this thing. If you extend the exit of the slope a little bit, then the slope might, it's less likely to, to break like that. But just because the, the Sonic World is detecting the angle in this region, and it's sort of detecting that angle as an actual slope. So what's, ha what's happening in there is that it's it, it, it kind of breaks like that. It's just because of the, sen the way the sensors work. It's, it's kind of a normal glitch, actually, in a way, based on how it works. If you extend it, that thing's just never gonna happen. Pretty much, just like that. See how fast it goes to do that. Oh man, I like going fast. Alright, let's save it. Oh, by the way, once you add a new asset, usually when you save, it does take a while to load. Keep so that in mind. Okay, so first, I'm doing a background. We need to make sure our sky box is right, and we need to make it right. But first of all, before we do anything, this layer just has a whole bunch of backdrops in it. Layer two, and they move at a slow speed. Why? Well. We're gonna click on layer 3 right over here, and I'm gonna go into properties, and you see scrolling options. Now we see X coefficient and Y coefficient. If they're equal to 1, they are at the right position. However, layer 2 is 0 0.4, and layer 1 is just 0. 0 means it's completely attached to the, f to the background. It does not move, essentially. You can also achieve this by using an, a not follow the frame option, but 
might as well not do that. In this case, just have the scrolling option be zero for I think super far away. Also, you have got to remember that vision itself is exponential. So uh, something that is uh, zero point five, uh, no, no, zero point three from zero point four is actually twice as far away than zero point three from four, something like that. It's Essentially, I think it's a curve, it's like, oh, let me get a snip into and do a thing. It's essentially a curve that's like this. So, keep that in mind, this is like one, and this is zero. Zero is infinitely far away, that means it just doesn't move. But it's fine to keep things at zero, like really far away things, you just keep them at zero. And for example, this thing is somewhat over here, that's where the four is. But it doubles, so 5 is going to be over here, and then 6, 7, 8, and 9, something like that. I'm not sure if it's like this or like this. It's essentially the same, it really depends on what kind of axis you're using for the graph itself. So I guess this would be uh, the value and actual distance? I think, no. Distance, well, oh, fucking hell. I don't care, but basically <laughs> you just set your variables right, variables right. And another another thing is make sure X and Y are the same variable for the most part. In some stages you might want to keep X at like zero, for example. So let's keep X over here at zero. No, not X. Uh, you might want to keep Y at zero because here's the thing. Sometimes here's what happens if you keep Y at zero. Just check out the background. It moves left and right, but it seems to follow me when I move up and down. As you can see over there, it just stays put. In some stages this is useful, but I don't recommend it. It's a neat effect, but it's... I just think it's incredibly unrealistic and might actually give people some nausea. So keep them at the same val variable, at the same value essentially, because then it's just a lot more natural. They're more natural moving. You know, like they move horizontally in the same way that they move in that way. So, how do you make the different parallax layers? Well, we duplicate uh, layer 2. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna make our sky. We delete all those objects. Alright, this is different from the background system box system of... Uh, unit is uh, 0 0.5 and delta. This system is better because you can make that into an active. And in an active, an active in layer 1 or layer 2, you can program this active. If you remember, in Freedom Planet, in Battle Glacier, I think, there was a section in that stage where there was a huge fight going on in the background. Well, this fight is done in this way. It, they're just active objects being programmed to fight in the background while you move through it. The problem with background system boxes is that you cannot animate them. However, you can animate actives. So we can just animate an active. You can just put an active in there and it will most likely work. Well, here's a little problem though. So I'm going to delete all those and you only have that one over there. One problem that we might have with backgrounds is that... Okay, so we start the game and we don't see the background. That's because it's somewhere off to the distance. We need to make sure that it's... And it's close close to you and you can see it so you know how it works so if you added a background and it doesn't work it doesn't show up don't don't panic you'll, you'll be fine you can do that with what system in Delta I, I know what you're talking about mate anyways all right so let's add sky to our little stage and I kind of wanted to get sky from chemical plant but it will be fine it's something else let's do a little collage using stuff from, from this specific stage aha so let's grab this thing let me delete this Here's a little tip in Photoshop, if you click this button, which is the crop icon, 
So you, okay, so you select this thing first, click somewhere else, and then you click crop, and it already selects that thing. So you click on enter, and ban. Right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete the sun. Let's fuck the sun. Makes things too hot. Uh, we're gonna add a gradient map. And use a flares. Just. Uh, what is it? This gradient map. I always lose myself. My dumbass. So here, we're gonna make it. This is lighter color, and surprisingly, this guy is surprisingly light. It's not very good. In this case, we might need a different thing just for the sky itself. So we select it. There we go. I know I'm using oil lotion. I don't, I'm not sure if people, most people, even like this stage, but I make do. Country girl makes do. <laughs> Right, so I want to make this a very heavily nighttime stage, in a way. So in a way, I want to make this color dark color. Sky needs to be—it's a city sky of sorts, but it's lit up by red lights. So it could be a dark red color of sorts. Pink. Let's go with a pink. Like start the speedway. Clouds though, the clouds are not darker in the bottom because they're being lit up by the city. So we can flip the clouds. So they're darker on the top. And now we're gonna find a way to color the actual thing in here. And I wanna make this just a very dark thing. It's a very dark city. But it can't be like that. It needs to be like a very darkish red. This is well. So, or a pink. Could be a pink. Mm. Alright. If you move this very close, you can make the shading much harsher. Right, now we have that over there, ain't looking all that amazing. This is just sort of like our very far away box. Not this color, I want to make it darker. Oh, let's make it full dark, I guess. Full darkness. Now I can do this, and I have something. This is only one color though, so it might be a little bit boring. So let's make this a background. Let's call it a B one. So main background layer. Now I need something else. What can we use? We can use those and make buildings out of those things, but we might as well just get some other background. And what we got. We got Carnival Night over here. I'm looking at something out of Carnival Night. God, why does it have to be like this? So bad. And the elements of the stage are probably white as well, so... And also, sometimes the layer is like locked, and if you click this, it's gonna fill. And here's what fill filling does. It's gonna take a while, now it just fills the empty area with Carnival Night. And it's kind of funny, it's a very trippy ass effect that Photoshop does. Check this shit out. I don't know how they do it, but this is amazing. <laughs> Anyways, not gonna need that. Just double kick the, the layer with the block and do this. Might not be a good idea to use those buildings considering that you know, there's a little problem there. But we can make do. 
so... Now, for some reason, the fucker who made this separated into several multiple chunks. And it sucks, because you have to meld them together. The fucking Melvin. Does that mean anything? I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, now what do we do? Oh boy. Because if, if we do this... Shit. So I don't like Carnival Night. Fuck Carnival Night. Uh, right. We should use what we got. But things are making it a little bit harder. Those sprites aren't great. I should just get like. Oh my god. Lake complains. There we go. There's some buildings we can use. Oh no, they're they're fucking horrible though. Not great. <laughs> there, there's a building. Let's use that one. Let's make a background kind of a collage of stuff. No, I like that. I am angry. I just want to get this done fast because I've been here for way longer than I should have been. So, I can just mix and match things a little bit. Make them interesting. I make you cry? Man, give a shit. So, let's make this thing. Doesn't look amazing, but it's battle X. Making water though is completely different. I don't I never recommend you do that. But we can do water. We can make a little lake in the bottom. Mm. Let's make this at varying height so it doesn't look like it's exactly the same building. And what else can we use? Is this. Thing. Oh, your whole shit is fucking weird. Yeah, but here's the thing though if we're gonna make water for a beach level, that's a whole different issue. The way I did it in my games is it's just a static image that moves up and down. And I didn't even make the code, that's someone else's code. It was buried way back in Sonic Fames HQ. The guy who made it is called Dimension Warped. He's still around in, uh, uh, I think it's Sonic United. So you can go there and talk to the guy if you want. Uh, I'm not sure if I use this code anywhere in my games. I probably did use it in Corona Adventure in a couple of places. So you can use that one if you want, if you really wish to. Uh, I think in the in the mines level you can find the code for it. Yeah, go in the in the mines level, level that's I don't know what's the name of it. Forgot it. Someone that uses music from after the sequel, and it's it uses a water that is like that. Right. So in making a background, I usually like to make a bottom of it. And the bottom is usually something like this. I'm not gonna just end it there, there's gonna be a little bit more to it.
This is just a dumbass layer of background. Not very great. Put a little variance in your backgrounds like always. It's very good to do that. So it doesn't look exactly the same thing. Kind of have to in a ways. The background doesn't have to also follow the exact same rules as tiling. You don't really have to. Because it works in a... It's similar but not exactly the same. So, now that I've done this, we got a, a background layer. It's bad. Let's apply a gradient map to it. I'm gonna make it similar to this one. Except more like this one. Ooh. Ooh, that's full, full aesthetic. Can make it full aesthetic. Ooh. Not really. Let's not do that. See what I'm making? I'm making my background like purple and blue and other tones that are not entirely used in the stage itself. That's the magic of gradient maps. You can do all of those things. They're fucking great. Love them. Yeah, check it out or shit, shit he has ready on it. There's the one part there that is like super colored. I really like that blue, huh? Blue storm. Some areas don't exactly have what I want, so I'm gonna be a bastard and change their color. Let's make them this color. Not amazing, but uh, B2. Now we need another layer of background, and we can do that. Copy this one, and go new, let's make a new, a new image, size, I can make the size, percentage, make this like 60 or 70 percent, 60, I think 50 would be better. Yeah, but since it's gonna leave, okay, so here's the thing when I make it parallaxing, usually they leave, because of the way they move, they leave a little empty space at the bottom. Make sure you fill that up with something at the very least. And I need to apply some sort of fog into this image. It doesn't need to be exactly in the same way that I'm going to do it, but I'm going to just create a mask and make this black. Just so it's like a, it's like a fog that f fades into this, this area right over here. This is like kind of like a morning kind of setting in a way, but it's, it can also be like a darker part of a city, like a dark factory lit up by a city that's very far away. So we set the opacity to something. Like you can just set the opacity over here. So now it looks very dark. It's a very dark background. It's a very dark zone overall. And sometimes the colors might not even match, so you have sometimes you have to go back and change everything. It's just kind of how it is. And over here, change the size to 50 again and 50 again. However, this might be looking a little bit weird now that I've changed the size all this much. So I could just resize it. And this in this case, I don't exactly need to keep to the pattern because it's just a background piece. It's not like a tile set. It's not that important for me to keep it at the same size. So I can extend this thing. Also, let me change the, this thing. This thing is covered the whole thing. Let 
No, no. Look at that. So we can. It could have it mixed them, but not allowing us because this the other layer has a mask in it. Now it can just since those things are very far away, you're not very likely to notice issues. We can stretch a couple of the buildings away so we can make them look a little bit different. Now this is enough. It's not a bit that great, but yeah. Release the mask. So get this one. We put the mask again. Now we put the opacity higher, much higher. Now we can barely even see it, but we should add something to it. I make this a B3. No, not B3. It's B4. Now, I'm gonna make a proto water of sorts. And I'm gonna be using this image exactly to do it. So we're gonna mix, mix all the layers. Duplicate image, flip vertically. Here's how we're gonna do a proto water. Essentially, it's just a simple reflection of sorts. And now we can go ahead, make this into whatever color we want our water to be. Make it a purplish. Now we can change the blending patterns. And just by using the blending patterns, we can change it several things until we think it looks good. Like this one, the vision, it's a good one for water like this thing. Alright, so now that we have this, we can save this. I might as well extend it a little bit as well. So we mix those layers, so just mixed. Right, and then now that it's like this, we can save it and save it as B0, right? Should be good enough. Now, I want to add a little bit of a of water to it, like water sparkles, so we can kind of have a water parallax going on. This is kind of a fake water parallax, but it does get the job done. So here's a, a tip and trick to do it in Photoshop. So we just get this area and we paint it white. Now we go over here in the bl blending mode and we choose it to dissolve, right? And then what we do is that we change the opacity. See what it does? Right, now we can erase certain parts of it. Right, now we're gonna do that. Alright. Now what we do is that you create an empty layer and you mix it with that one. I can delete a couple of things as well. Not too much. Just keep it like some little bit of water sparkles in there. Now we color it something like I don't know the sky color. We go in this hue and saturation. If we can color and we decrease this thing and increase the saturation, we can color it something. So we can color it like this, like a little bit of a purple color. Now we can delete this again, some of them. Alright, now that we have this, we can select this thing and save it. I'm just saving a couple of freckles, you can barely see them. So it's, we'll just gonna call it BF0, it's background freckles. All right, now let's set up our parallax. Okay, so in this thing, in the heavily far away part, layer one, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change this thing into this. It doesn't exactly fill everything. Oh, it actually fills it a lot more than necessary. Well, we can set it somewhere like that. Now over here in layer two, you can check out this image, it's in layer two. I will be making layer two. Yeah, I'm finally getting to backgrounds, so, but layer two, I'm going to be making this one. And we're going to be setting this thing to whatever it was before. Uh, now let me set this to 0 0.6. Let me make this like some far away kind of buildings. Now, what we're going to do 
it's hard to set up a parallax. Usually, the, uh, if you wanted to show up in the player's field of view, uh, you, de depending on the how low this thing is. Okay, so basically, if you have a whole stage like this and your variable is 0 0.5, essentially, it's gonna show up at the half of your position. So if your position is here, the background is gonna be the halfway between here and here. So it's gonna be like this. Now that we're setting this to 0 0.6, it's gonna be around here or so. So I'm gonna be setting it like that. Not sure if this is gonna work, but I can try. Now we need to vary this thing a little bit. Copy and paste it. This is a backdrop, so there's no animation to it, but we can make it inactive if we wanted to. Now if we click on play, let's see if we see anything. Now we just see that background. So we need to check this thing out, either move it up or move it down. But we just see that, so let's let's try going down. Alright, let's try going down and nothing shows up, so it's way too far up. Now I can place it way down here and see if it works. So far I got nothing, so maybe it's way up there. It's right over there. But it seems like it's a little bit too fast for buildings that are supposed to be far away, so... Instead of doing that, we're gonna go into layer 2 again, and we're gonna change layer 2 to... 0. 8. And I know this is a high volume. It seems odd, but it's kind of true. Mania doesn't really do that. Mania has far away buildings that are like 0 0.5. It, it's something. In my opinion, I pers personally don't like it, but you can do it that way if you want to. As you can see, they're still not here. By, by pressing R, we can go up. So I need to move them up a lot more. And yeah, that's how, just how it is about setting up a, back, a background. It's just like that. Now we have... Did they show up? God damn it. I don't know if they're too down or too up. What am I doing wrong? Am I doing something wrong? I think I'm doing something- Oh yeah, I forgot. Okay. Dumbass fucking mistake. I forgot that it's not- in, in, the, in background system box is from one- No, one is the full background, but this is the reverse. It should be closer to zero. I'm just fucking it up. So it should be set to 0 0.2 instead. Ah, I'm so used to the other system. I used uh, that system I used in Spark. Does it show up? No, but it's way up there now. I can see it though. So we just need to move them now. Let's just do this. This is not so like the thing. Okay. There we go. We got it. Got it. Nice. Now, in the same layer, I'm gonna clone this object. And I'm gonna use this one. This is the water reflection. Not the most amazing thing in existence, but I should do it. And if you go far enough in the stage, you can probably see it. Yeah, there it is. But we don't need just that, we need something, something else. Okay, so before we add the, uh, the actual water effects and make it more 3D, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make a new layer. Let's click on new. And we have a new layer too. Now, this, oh, this is layer two. Okay, so moved it up. So now it's layer three. It's, Hard to notice, but we're gonna have to pay attention to, the, to this number over here. So now we have a new layer too, and if we go into the properties over here, we need to the layer, and you need to set the properties to something else. So it was 0 0.2, this one's gonna be 0 0.1.5. Or let's set it to 0 0.1.3 actually. So let's disable this one. Let's make, double click it if you have nothing to clone, 
Just create a backdrop, put it over there, and this thing over here, just click here, import, and then you import uh, B3. So now we know where that is, just do that. So we know where it is. Usually you have to place it up more upwards because remember it's a fraction of the screen. So this one is over there. So is it on the top? No, it's not on the top at all. Uh, right, layer two. Oh, the new layer is on the top. Oh. God, I'm not used to doing this. Yeah, I just... Fuck. <laughs> just move this here. <laughs> Might as well do this so we can see the names of it. Okay. We got it. Oh, that was a that was embarrassing. Thanks, dude. So in the middle back. And in layer four we got the player. Yes. So here in layer three. Alright, we can make this invisible and put on a backdrop. Hate this shit. I hate making layers. I don't really do it do it that much, so I wouldn't really know. I can hear a fucking song. Oh god, it's a car. Please ignore it. Right? So... It's still fucked. We can just get it and put it over here. Done. Now let's check it. Always check it. Look how busy it looks. Oh, now it looks right. This is like the most amazing thing. Like, I think the color still would need some tweaking. Maybe the background or the foreground should be made a lot more, a lot less darker. This is supposed to be like a very dark city too, so. And now we can see the city skyline just over there. If you go down here, there's a little lake. Or a little river. Could be anything really. Mm, I don't think we can actually. Yeah, we just have to make a layer over here and then drag it back. So we can we can re rename layer so name mid back back so and this is gonna be mid back 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 there we go I'm very good at naming things as you can probably tell my genius is in parallel let's make backdrop let's make it B4. Put it over there, just a little bit above it, too. And now this thing is gonna be made into 0 0.7. 0 0.07. 0 0.07. In fact, that might be a little bit too much, but let's just keep it that way. In fact, you can do this, nobody will really notice it. Alright. So, that way I can click play. Have a little background in there. See it? It's rather nice. Then again, those buildings that are far away, not moving might be a problem. We got a little dark city. 
we just, we just need some fitting music and some animated stuff. And I can make animated backgrounds as well, so... Now we're gonna add something else. Let's add a new thing. New layer. And in the level middle layer, I'm just gonna change this to a different name. Playable. This, I'm gonna add water freck one. And this is where we're gonna add our water freckles. Let's add a backdrop. This need to be a backdrop, could have been an active. Let's make it an active. And let's make it into What am I going to think when I see your edits? Well, have I seen those edits so I can comment on them? No, I haven't. So I can't comment on them. <laughs> yeah, now that we made this, it's hard to select it. Let's name it something else too, because it's going to be tough. Oh boy. Water freckle. So, now what do we need to do? Well, Change this. Let's see, this layer itself is 0 0.2. This could be like a 0 0.4 or 3. 0 0.3 might be a little bit too much. And we need to move this down. Let me tell this layer to fuck off. Oh, this is gonna be tough, isn't it? You need to click on the pixel precisely. Act. Let's just leave it that way. Okay, I need to make more of it. Ugh. Okay, let's make this a lot easier to control. I'm doing this. It doesn't look just like the platform. Now we can select it. Look to shant posting. Okay. Your edit. Your edit of what? Oh, that thing? Yeah, I don't know, man. Just make your memes. Alright, so... A bit more water freckles. Let's see how it works. Let's see where those water freckles actually are. Uh, they're not in the right place, in the right detail. This is like a way of fake water. And it's not really water, per se, it's just the freckles on top of the water, making it look like it's actually like some shine on top of it. Yeah, for example, look at that over there, just move on top of it. Not nice. In fact, I'm gonna change the layer density. And yeah, making backgrounds takes a lot of trial and error, so this is just par for the course, really. Everyone asked what the song is, it's from Bayonetta. It's up the after winner remix in Bayonetta. It's called the Climax Mix. Alright, so the freckle is way down there, but this is better. Alright, so we can add more freckles now. Add a new layer. Just rename it to Water Freck 2. The order really in this case doesn't really matter all that much. So now I'm just gonna get this thing. Like get the layer. This one I'm gonna make 0 0.3 I think. See? It's better, it's still not amazing. Just need to make sure that they don't do what they're doing. Might need to just add another freckle layer, but that might not even be necessary really. Come on, I gotta do. There. 
Not the most amazing thing in existence, but it does sort of add some water wateriness to it. The thing is going above it. No. Gotta change it. If only you could add the edit this stuff in real time, but you really can't. Almost. We almost got it, guys. Almost got it. Now I have something. It's not much, but there's at least some some effect to it. Now, I'm gonna be adding something that I really would just like to add in general. Uh, how many tutorials will we do? I'm gonna finish this stage. That'll be over, but I might not be finishing it today. Because I've been here for a long time. Been here for almost three hours. So I'm gonna be just adding a little thing. I'm gonna be adding a perspective object. Perspective object is a tricky object, but we can get it to work. Just not make it too big. Mm, I might need a new layer for it. Can I just make it huge? So let's add it to, to perspective. No, to sine wave, sine offset. Direction horizontal, like top. Zoom value, like two. Sunrise so for let me see if it does anything first of all. This is this is how you make distortions. Might not even work. No, it's not working. I would have to use some code in order to attach it to the screen, so I guess we're not gonna be using it, but still. This is our current level so far. This is what we made so far. Let me just get it and play it with Arsana. Not the most amazing thing in the world, but we got ourselves a level going from scratch. What is the FNAF office object? What? Okay. Yeah, uh, well, we, ha we have to, we have to do something else right, to make it work. Anyways, this is our stage so far. It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but we can make it work. And when will we be doing that? Some other time. This is it for now. If we're gonna be ending the stream real soon. If you have any questions in the chat, just ask right now. I'm just gonna be here playing around with the character. And you guys go ahead and ask questions if, if it needs to be. Yeah, it's kind of like Eggman Land, yeah. Hmm. In fact, let's add a little bit more level. Let's be here for like, let me check. Uh, about 10 minutes. So, you guys got anything? Anything you'd like to see in the stage itself? You can ask away. Doesn't mean it's gonna be in it, but I'll take suggestions. No, I never made my own engine in Clicks Infusion. That shit's probably really hard. And I don't see much need to do that, too. It's. Worlds seem to work reasonably well, too. People people give it a much more of a bad rap than it deserves, to be really honest. It's It has powered two games so far that don't have that many quote-unquote physics flaws. In fact, I, th I think Sonic Worlds is better for original games than it is for a Sonic game. Which is paradoxical, but nonetheless not a horrible thing. In fact, it's probably a good thing. 
just shows that it has a lot of utility to it. Uh, I've made several games in other engines. I guess you don't know much about me, but I've done like a shit ton. Oh, I, I can't even begin to like describe all of it. Or tell you all of it. It's a lot of stuff. And by the way, just check out the way I'm level designing here, how I mix and match my tile sets. Just to make it a little bit less boring. I don't like those kinds of those types of tile sets, really, but it's what we got. So let's just roll with it. Potential to make an interesting station here. Just potential though. Could be other crap. Oh, I'm not in the playable layer, huh? Whoops. That's a mistake I make frequently, actually. Thanks for pointing it out. But it's fine, since we're using a grid. I can literally just do this. I make this mistake, like, super often, by the way. Oh, yeah, and it did make several sprites from scratch for before the sequel. Uh, stages like Rocky Ride used a lot of them. It was my first attempt at doing it, so they weren't really all that great, but I did them anyways. Oh, and the sprites for Sonic are... The original was made by Pedro, and then the rest I made by myself, basically. And it was like an edit by... Pedro made like a sprite, and then I liked it, and then I made several edits of it. So I could get something interesting going. And then I f followed from that. Oh man, it doesn't feel right to be working in layer fucking 7. like Super Mario Maker, what? Does this look super like Super Mario Maker? I'm not sure if it does. I'm just doing like throwaway level design so far. It's not a big deal. And this is how it hides springs, by the way. You, pl you put on a platform in an upper layer. You just leave them there. It works. Trust me. <laughs> Still doesn't feel right to be working on layer 7, god. I always like had like one layer where I worked on stuff and my background pieces would go on a, on a specific layer, but that, this mad hood is just superior, I feel like. Oh, 
Alright, almost done here. Yeah, I'm only five, mi five more minutes and it'll be done. Oh, by the way, I'm used to making level design like this. I, I made like so many levels in Quick Fusion that, yeah, I did do this pretty fast. All right, let's test it out. <laughs> Can I get both at the same time? Nah. Oh wow, barely went any faster. Oh, now he goes fast. Hmm. So, how was it? I think it's the double jump, dash, and then jump again. Ah. No. Getting things wrong. Nice. This is the power of classic Sonic EX. Hold up for a spin dash, and then press up to get out of it. Ah oh, man. Let me see if I can get up there through this low. Yeah! <laughs> Full on Sonic, baby. Hmm, this is an interesting thing. See that this kidding just stopped for no reason. I don't know why. Anyways. Whew. This is it, guys. We're done here. Oh, also, I forgot to save several ways through, but I saved. So it's fine. I'll be seeing you guys next time with the rest of the stage. We're going to be making the level design itself. I'm going to be putting those things that I've mentioned before into practice and hopefully you can get something done holy shit this is a three hour stream I'm done I gotta go back to work see you guys some other time oh yeah and VODs will be available in like I don't know a couple hours probably because of YouTube it just does it like that so whatever and if you try to watch the video again you're only gonna be able to watch a portion of it so don't do that this is actually a three hour stream so see you guys later